Borderlands 2. It has more environments. It has new characters. It has more enemies. It has even more guns. But more importantly, it's also more of the same. So what else can we expect during our second visit to the world of Pandora? Here is Kevin Duke, concept designer at Gearbox Studio, to tell us more. We're coming back to Pandora. Uh, we're five years later, and uh, the Hyperion Corporation, led by Handsome Jack, is basically wreaking havoc on the planet. So um, you are coming in as a, as a new character. Um, still have our old characters. They're going to be showing up throughout the story. Uh, you're going to be helping them. They're going to be helping you. Uh, but, you know, in Borderlands 2, it's uh, mostly concentrating on this main antagonist, Handsome Jack. Handsome Jack. This tyrant will be the end of us all. When we recently went hands-on with Borderlands 2, we got the chance to explore two of the game's new environments, whilst also testing out one or two of new unique character classes. The Gunzerka character Salvador, a dual-welding heavy-armed tank of a man. The other new class is an assassin named Zero, although we will have to wait a bit longer to find out more on this deadly-looking new addition to the team. During the first game, the region of Pandora that we got to shoot and blow stuff up in was a very barren, rocky, desert environment. In Borderlands 2, new, more colourful locations have been included. One of these is the Wildlife Reserve, a long, dilapidated wildlife park where the many shades of brown have been replaced with lush green foliage. Here is Kevin to tell us more on the new environments of Borderlands 2. Borderlands 1, we concentrated on that desert environment. Um, you know, we had a lot of browns and, and, and the yellows. Uh, in the new one, we're looking at some, uh, some Arctic environments. We've got a lot of glacial areas. We've got uh, blues, you know, waters, purples. Um, and then we're also introducing our grasslands areas. A uh, little bit of Icelandic influence, uh, some Scottish highlands there. Borderlands boasted more guns than any other game before it. Going one better, Borderlands 2 is set to feature gazillions of guns. So we asked Kevin about what kind of new tools of enemy destruction can we expect? We've built a system where there is almost an infinite amount of weapons. Um, what we have done is introduced a few more manufacturers into the game. So you're going to see some of your familiar uh, weapons. Hyperion, Jacob is still there. Um, but we're also introducing our bandit class, um, which is our high capacity, um, kind of a, a homemade, you know, formed quarter inch steel, just brute weapon. Um, and also our TDR weapons, which are our disposable weapons. You throw those things and they blow up like grenades for every single reload, so. Disposable weapons? Hmm. I hope they're biodegradable. Well, that's going to be terrible, Pandora's lovely new environment. With the first game having such a strong focus on the co-op side of things, our biggest worry for the sequel was that it won't be the same great experience for the single player. We asked Kevin if this is something that has been addressed. While the game does have co-op elements, you know, our single player game needs to remain rich. Um, and, and in Borderlands 2, we've introduced a, uh, a much deeper storyline. You've got your handsome Jack, you have a main antagonist now that's driving you through the game. Um, we, we've deepened our RPG elements. Uh, your build trees uh, are, are going to have much more effect on, on you personally, um, as well as you know your co-op buddies. Um, but just you know, m making the game richer, uh, the new environments, uh, the again you know the, the the deeper build trees, you know will 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 make that single player experience just as rich. So 
certainly sounds promising. But what about the clearly much better co-op? We've made uh, getting into co-op games and getting out of co-op games much smoother, much uh, much better, the transition there. Uh, for example, if you're playing single player by yourself um, and you have a buddy come over, he can just plug his controller in, you know, it'll go to split screen and he's easily in and out. There's no restart in the game, none of that, none of that nonsense. So, you know, just much smoother. Um, also on our, you know, on our co-op, say you have uh, a buddy who's already done the levels that you've done, the missions that you've done. Well, he's going to be able to jump into your game, uh, get those missions again, have all the waypoints, you know, uh, be able to talk to the NPCs and get rewards just like you. There is no doubt about it. Borderlands 2 is more of the same, only bigger, badder and better. The new environments make the world of Pandora a much nicer place to visit, providing you're a psychotic badass that knows how to shoot a gun. Because these new environments are filled with mutated enemies out to make you worm food or fertilizer for the pretty green grasslands. But wait a minute, there is one thing we have forgotten. Yep, the lovable dancing trash can, Claptrap. Will he be dub-stepping his way into the sequel? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> we'll have all that. He's definitely back in the game. Um, you know, he's gone through uh, through some pretty terrible tragedies there, but uh, it's five years later. He might be a little, you know, crazier, but uh, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll definitely be in there. <laughs> Borderlands 2 will be out on Xbox 360, PS3 and PC in September. Thank you to Kevin Duke for taking the time to answer our questions and thank you for watching Daily Joypad TV. Remember to keep an eye out on dailyjoypad.co.uk for more on Borderlands 2 soon. Bye! Pandora's changed. Are you ready?